we're Physisaurus Rex, and our experiment is flipping physics. In this experiment, we're going to be comparing two different backflips and the rotational motion. The backflips are tuck and layout. Here's Mike with a tuck. A tuck is when your radius is a little bit smaller because you're tucked into a ball and your mass is closer to your axis of rotation. Um, here it is again. Now Mike is going to demonstrate a layout backflip. In a layout, your um, body is straight, and so your mass isn't as centered around the axis of rotation, and so your radius is a lot larger. Here's another layout. Now Mike is going to perform a bunch of tuck backflips so we can take the times and average it out. Well then. Mike? Are you in there? Um. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm just gonna check my mask. Uh, hmm. Yeah, 170 pounds. Let's go convert that to kilos. We're going to measure Mike's radius now for the tuck. This is my tuck position. And there's 46 centimeters. Perfect. That doesn't matter if it says go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now um, I'm all freshened up and I weighed myself on the scale and I found that I weighed 170 pounds. It's pretty huge. So I use my conversion. And I found that I w a, my mass is 77.1 kilograms. And Brittany had just measured my radius in the tuck formation. And we found that I was 46 centimeters all tucked up like that. So using the conversion, I am 0.46 meters in radius in the tuck. Let's cut it. I did. So Mike did a bunch of backflips in the tucked position, and we found the average time to be 0.654 seconds as our average. So then we have to find circumference, and to do that, you use the radius from the tuck, and so it's 2 pi r, and you plug everything in, and you get 2.89 meters. And then after that, you take theta, which was 360 degrees, and you have to convert that to radians. So one radian is equal to 360 degrees over 2 pi, and that's equal to 500 or 57.3 radians. So you have to divide 360 by 57.3, uh, and that ends up equaling 6.28 radians. So to find the angular velocity, oh, I mean omega. You take the change in theta over the change in time, right here, and you end up getting omega as 9.60 radians per second. And then we need to find alpha, the angular acceleration, and we find that by taking the change in w, I mean the change in omega over the change in time, and we end up with 14.7 radians per second. Cool angular. Yeah. All right, now we need to find our acceleration that I was rotating at, so first need to find the radial acceleration and the tangential acceleration. So, using the formula, omega squared times radius, we find that 9.6 radians per second squared times 0.46 meters gives us 42.4 meters per second squared. Now, for our tangential acceleration, we use the 
formula radius times alpha, which equals 0.46 meters times 14.7 radians per second squared, which gives us 6.72 meters per second. The next thing we need to do is find the velocity. So in order to do that, we use the equation a rad equals v squared times, or v squared divided by r, and we took the a rad 42.4 meters per second squared and do out the math and it turns out to be velocity equals 4.42 meters per second. And the next thing we're going to do is find the acceleration. We, for this use the equation a equals the square root of a rad squared plus a tan squared and that comes out to be 42.9 meters per second squared. So the, f the next step we have is to find I, the moment of inertia. This e since Mike, we decided he was most like a solid cylinder with a axis through the center. We can the equation is one half mass times the radius squared. So we plug in our numbers that we found earlier, and we end up with eight point one six kilograms times meters squared. Okay, now we have to find kinetic energy. So, to find K total, you have to go one-half mv squared plus one-half i omega squared. So, these guys and these guys, right? M and I, they both equal equal centripetal motion, okay? So then, these guys and these guys, you add them up, and you add them all together, and then you have this and this, and it equals that, and then you get 1130 joules, and then that's kinetic energy. Touchdown.